hello and welcome. Introduction. Now, so far I have been using assembly language uh, in my Edmega 328 videos. Now, the reason why I did that is that I just feel that the assembly language help us to understand how the internal hardware of the central processing uh, unit or CPU uh, works. However, real world embedded system software are developed using high level languages like C. Now, not many real world embedded systems are uh, totally written in assembly language. As mentioned just a few moments ago, uh, embedded system, uh, real world embedded system software are generally developed using uh, C. In fact, C is the preferred uh, programming language for embedded system uh, development uh, to date. Now, uh, furthermore, I would assume that you have some working knowledge of uh, C, but should you require a refresher on C, please refer to my videos 41 through to 50, video 51 for embedded C. Atmel Studio 7. Okay, so um, I'm going to assume that you have uh, install Atmel Studio 7. If you have not in installed Atmel Studio 7 and should you require any assistance or any help, please uh, visit my video, video 53 on assembly language and Atmel Studio. There you'll find uh, detailed, instructions, uh, detailed instructions as to how to install Atmel Studio 7. Now, Assuming that you have already installed Atmel Studio 7, uh, you, uh, you may find the, your Atmel Studio icon uh, on the taskbar, uh, like my, um, on my laptop, or you may find it on your desktop uh, or elsewhere. Locate that icon, click on it, and you should see this uh, pop up. And after a while, you'll finally, finally end up with this opening screen of your Atmel Studio 7. Now, this is a screen capture. Let me just go to my um, Atmel Studio 7 on my laptop. Okay, before I get uh, to uh, start up my Atmel Studio 7, let me just briefly show you the code that we'll be using. Here it is. Um, that's, this is it. So you have a include directive here with a define uh, something called f underscore CPU, and then another include directive. And here is the, the main function. Uh, there's no uh, other function except this. So I'll be going through each of these line uh, soon, in a few moments, and uh, hopefully everything will become clear. Oh, and then I'll be using something called the AVR library. And the AVR library or the AVR libc package, basically this is a subset of the standard C library. And this package here basically is for the ML AVR 8-bit RIS. And within this library, we'll find a header file called io.h. Please just make a mental note of this because we'll be coming back to this and basically this header file contains all the relevant all the relevant input output or IO definitions for the device specified by the compiler in our case the device would be the 8 mega 3 to 8 hardware now we need some hardware for this a particular video. So here is the uh, schematic diagram or the circuit diagram. So we have an LED and the anode of the LED is connected to pin 12 of the Arduino Uno, which is this pin here. And then the cathode is connected to a, a resistor. All right. And to a 220 ohm resistor and the other end of the resistor is connected to the to the ground. 
So here is the wiring diagram. So we start off with the resistor. The resistor is here, connected to ground, taken to the ground via this uh, connection, this wire. And then the anode, which is this part here of the LED, is connected to pin 12, as mentioned earlier. The cathode uh, is connected via this link to the resistor. All right. Uh, and that's it. Uh, the reason why I'm using this link is because if I put it here, then it's difficult to uh, to see uh, the connection. So anyway, so this is the, the hardware that is required for this video. Okay, so I've uh, started up my uh, Atmel Studio 7. So, um, so in this particular segment, this section of the video, I'm going to go through with you for those who are not familiar, familiar with um, uh, creating a C uh, project with Atmel Studio 7. I'm going to go through with you the steps. Um, it's very similar if you have been following my video series on Atmega 3 to 8. Uh, it's very similar to the assembler language, uh, how to create an assembler language. It's very similar. All right. So, uh, anyway. Uh, let's get started. So either from here, either you use this particular option here in the new project, or you go to File, uh, New, go for Project. All right, and uh, if when you're doing uh, uh, machine code assembly language programming, you would choose uh, this one here. But today, uh, we're not doing that. We're going to use C slash C++ and then look for GCC C executable project. Click on that. All right. Here at the bottom here, uh, you would give yourself the, the, the file of the project and name. So what I'm going to do for this particular exercise, I'm going to do you, sorry, YouTube demo. All right, so uh, uh, I've chose to use the default location to store this particular uh, project. So go to click OK. And another uh, box will pop up. Now here, we need to type in S with the uh, assembly language, the device that we are using. So it's, our device is at mega 328. P, all right, to narrow down uh, the selection. So this is the P version. Click OK. All right, and you are then you'll be presented with this particular uh, uh, screen. Now, uh, this is where our uh, uh, this is where you will key in your uh, your code. Uh, so I'm going to be lazy. I'm going to go to the uh, the code that I showed you earlier. I'm going to just copy that. Uh, I'm hoping hoping that uh, nothing goes wrong here, because sometimes you copy and paste like this can create a lot of problems. Uh, right. Okay. So let's save it. All right. Let's save this and then go to build. So let's build. Okay. So uh, I'm pretty pleased with this because uh, one succeeded or uh, update up to date, zero fail, zero skip. So we, we this this code is okay. Now, what I want to explain is this three lines here. All right. Now, this first include directive. You have this. In fact, this is a standard. Uh, it's included every time you create a new uh, project or a new solution. All right. This two uh, come to that. Uh, come to uh, in a minute. So this two. We have, uh, sorry, the first include directive is this uh, arrow brackets, 
well, in between you have avr slash io.h. Now, this is the avr library that I mentioned a few moments ago. Now, if you Google this, you'll find it uh, uh, on the internet on, uh, with Google. So, this is the, uh, the contents of that from there. Now, this will def the io.h file will define the input output definitions, as I mentioned earlier, uh, all the relevant registers uh, 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 that is associated with the device that uh, that you are using for your project. Now, in our case, uh, the Arduino Uno used the uh, Atmega three two eight. So, in the search box here, I'm going to type Atmega. 328p and then you have it all right so it says uh, lsafe define uh, avr at mega 328p define at mega uh, underscore underscore avr underscore at mega 328 and then can you see this include uh, avr slash iom 328p.h now i will show you this file let again we use Google. I've already Googled it, so it's here. All right. If you Google that, uh, you'll come to this. Probably hit this page. It's a Git GitHub file. And uh, here again, I'm going to look for. Right. So it's an Mega three two eight file anyway. So yeah. So to confirm now. I just want to scroll down. We look for DDRB because that's the the data direction register B. All right, so here they defined it. So if you notice, they say define DDRB uh, SRF special function registers one zero eight brackets zero four. Uh, I I presume this is the address of DDRB, and then here DDRB zero define it's all defined. So when you use typed in DDRB in your code, it will recognize it, provided you have include the avr slash io.h header file uh, in your code. All right. So I just want to show you this. Let me, let me just go back to our code. All right. So you need to make sure that you have this. This is by default. It appears in your every time you start a new project anyway. All right. Now, I'll come back to this too uh, in a few moments. Now let's look at the the main function. So it's uh it's no it's not a void here. I call it an int of the type int, and inside here void. And then we have ddrb. You recognize that? All right. Just a few moments ago, I show you. How. Now, if I do not, if this is not included in the beginning of the uh, of your code, let me just comment it out. All right, and then save it, and then build it again. Rebuild. Can you see uh, under the uh, error list uh, that's generated here? DDRB undeclare first use in this function. It doesn't reckon if, you, if I double click on that, it highlights it. It doesn't recognize this anymore. All right, so let me just take this out, save it, go to build, rebuild again, and the problem's gone. All right, so this is important if you're using uh, uh, these uh, registers here. So this has to be in. Okay, so. Uh, let's look, look, look. Let's look at the main uh, function again. Uh, so this is a while brackets uh, one. So that this here, this loop here would be a forever loop. All right. So now here we're using port B again uh, because we already use the include directive. So there's no issue here. But let's let me just show you again. So if I were to put that in, comment it out, rebuild the solution. Again, you see this, it doesn't recognize port B. All right. But if I was to take this back out, save it, 
rebuild. Okay, so part B. So I'm going to send this uh, binary code out. So what? Uh, oh, this is, there's an error here that this should read uh, port B. All right, this should read port B bit four. So uh, port B bit four, which is this one here, this bit here, and that is a one, and then followed by a delay, and then uh, port B bit four, which is this one here, is z is zero is off. Uh, this is because we have attached the LED in port B bit uh, four. All right, referring to the hardware that we have talked about earlier. So, so you have is uh, so what we're having here is a uh, we switch the bit four or port B on here, then we switch it off, and then it keeps going round and round. So we have a a blinking or a flashing uh, LED, and we have in between a delay. Now this delay uh, is recognized by the compiler so far, but watch what happens here if I were to do this. Rebuild. And you find there are errors. It doesn't recognize this uh, delay uh, instruction here. So, but if I take it back out, all right, and then uh, rebuild, no problem. All right, so we need this uh, include directive with the util slash delay dot h header file. All right, now what about this? This define this uh, f underscore cpu one uh, six zero 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 ul. Now this define the speed of the uh, processor so it's a 16 megahertz processor so you you need to de you need to declare this here now let's see what happens if i don't have this so let me take this out rebuild it kinds of it's not an error but it, it warns you that uh, the CPU is not the uh, the sorry the speed is not defined here. All right, so if we take it back out and uh, what do you think what happens now? So it should go. There should be no error. So we are okay. Now you would thought that's it, right? Now no, just wait for a while. Let's see if I. What happens if I were to take this off and put it underneath here? Let's make it a little bit tidy so that. It, all right, and let's just leave it there like this, and watch what happens when I build this thing this time. Rebuild. Ah, we're still getting a problem here. That's because you need to define this. Before the include directive of the ut util slash delay dot h file, all right. So if you if I put it back here, save it, rebuild, and everything is good again. All right. So uh, these are some of the features that uh, you need to be aware of when you're using the Atmel Studio to write your C. Uh, program. Now that we know that it has compiled successfully, let's try and do a debug uh, with this program. All right, so let's go to debug. Uh, wait a minute. Get, oh, <clears throat> here we need to change this to simulator. All right, so um, just give me a minute to sort myself out. Oh no, it's this one here, sorry. <clears throat> right, so make sure the tool that you select is a simulator. Alright, uh, see this asterisk here? 
you need to save it close it so now I think we are good for that let, let, let's let's just rebuild this thing just to make sure okay so we're good all right so we succeeded so debug start debugging and break uh, let's open up port B so the first line uh, of the C code is to uh, write this into DDRB uh, that is because we're using the port B as an output so uh, let's do a okay so let's do a single step uh, I'm going to use uh, F11 uh, to start off with all right that is to step into F11 so there we have it ddrb is all set to once ff ff in hexa it's here now port b which is this register here so that uh we're going to use a f11 all right so again so we are so we got a uh, bit four remember this is bit zero one two three four so it's uh so it's and on a one so let us go back to the main program now <clears throat> for the next one I'm going to step over I'm not, I'm not going to step into this delay that would take uh, ages to come out so what I'm going to do I'm going to use an F10 a step over so wait a minute it's, it's a bit stuck okay so what i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to stop the video for a while okay <clears throat> so what i'm what i'm done done here is i'm good i have commented out the delay uh, apparently it doesn't like to be single stepped or, or or the single step doesn't seem to work so what i'm going to do is uh i have commented it out so let us start to do the debugging again all right so uh Okay, good use F11. So it's that set to one now. It's come to this part here. So we skip this uh, delay. Uh, I'm going to assume that it has executed the delay. Uh, I can prove that this works. Uh, just, just bear with me for the time being. So now I'm going to switch this thing, this bit four off. Uh, it does, and it goes back up. It switches back on again. Switches off. Switches off or on again off again and so on so it, it keep repeating itself all right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the debug session here remove this remove this save it rebuild okay and this time uh, I'm going to upload it to the uh, Arduino Uno and run it from the Arduino Uno and see whether it flashes the LED. All right, so just bear with me for a time being. Okay, so um, uh, let's rebuild this thing one more time. All right, and uh, before before I just uh, upload it. Uh, here we are we have this uh, we have this Arduino Uno here and this is a bit 4 connected to this green LED here all right so uh, let me just go <coughs> now to this part here <coughs> and uh, I'm going to upload it to the Arduino Uno. All right, and you can see now the green LED is uh, blinking. Therefore, uh, establish or ra rather uh, proving that this delay is actually working. All right, I'll leave it on for a little while longer. All right, so okay so that's that's it for this particular demonstration okay so that's it for this video i i hope 
uh, you have found it useful. So in the next video, I'll be using C to program the 8 mega 3 to 8. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.